Hey family, thank you for tuning in to Our Roots Podcast with Joseph Babaifa, where only the strongest roots see the light. Brought to you by Botanica Candles and more. And if you haven't had the opportunity, please hit that subscribe button and tap on that like button. Great interview we have lined up for you today with a gentleman who is initiated as a babalawo, Mr. Julio Morales, Awoy Fache, Obaraobe. Julio, welcome. Hello, everybody. Nice to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, the pleasure's all ours, brother. We were very excited when finally someone took the opportunity as a, a member, which we appreciate so much, to actually be on the channel and get interviewed. You know, you're the first. All right. All right. Um, I recommend it for everybody. Um, if you're on this channel, please uh, subscribe and uh, join the VIP club uh, for the R Root Podcast. You have no idea the information that you can receive just by uh, giving a little support to this channel. Um, I personally believe that this channel could save many lives. And if you do uh, go to this uh, to this podcast and join this VIP member, there's unlimited access of information with Ifa, Eshun, and even more so, mi mayor de aquí adelante, mi Joseph Baba Ifa. I appreciate that, Olu. And, you know, I, we're really excited as well because more and more people are coming in. They're seeing the value from the membership program. And uh, with the shorts that Phil puts out, a lot of people be like, what, what, what video is this in? And a lot of the really great information is in the program. I do it on purpose. Oh, Phil, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> I do it on purpose. Shout out to your shorts, man. But um, <laughs> it's, it's bringing a lot of great people closer to us, and we're all learning together and growing together. So it's, it's, it's nice to see it having that positive effect. So, Juli, um, we, we want to get into your backstory, brother. Where are you from? Let's start there. <clears throat> I was born in uh, Hialeah, Florida, yes. Palmetto Hospital. Yes. Uh, February 14 of 1996 is when this son of Eshun came to the ground. <laughs> um, I was raised there my whole life. Um, and uh, that's really my playground. That's really where all my memories come from, from West Hialeah. From West Hialeah, uh, Little Havana, Carroll City, you know, Opalaka, but for the most part, that's where I was at all my life, Hialeah. Uh, I, I really, I resonate with you, brother, because we're from the same place, and mm -hmm. I remember, and you're, we're contemporary, we're a couple years apart, but we're, we're same generation, definitely, and um, what were your memories of Hialeah as a young man? What do you recall, like, just the energy and the ambiance just being there? And just a bunch of funny, crazy Cubans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Cuba. It really was back then. It's changed so much. But I remember as a young kid, like one of my fondest memories is as a young boy, because my uh, my aunt lived on Red Road. Wow. There's a there's a fresco mart right by there. I forgot what the cross street is, but it's right by the canal. And I remember every morning she'd go to the market, traía pan, you know, the pastelitos. Every morning the coffee was going like people were outside. The energy, you know. La 57. Yeah. The cuatro de, yeah, la cuatro de way. yeah, basically, yeah, that's the, that's exactly where it was. She lived right there. And um, I just remember the energy being, at least as a young boy, you see all these people, it was, it was really communal. Right. It was like a community. Like, it, you felt like you were getting raised by your neighbors sometimes because everybody was around. Easy. And I can, I can really refer to that because a lot of the times, you know, um, I'm actually the first generation born here. Um, my father was born in Cuba, and five, when he was five years old, he ended up um, coming here to the States. And, uh, you know, I was actually raised by my grandmother and my, and my father. And uh, due to having to make ends meet, my father was constantly working, you know, and uh, so was my grandmother. They, they would do the switch off. And um, a lot of the times, you know, I didn't have, uh, I didn't have that, uh, that family from family feeling, if not so much more family from friends, because that's how I would escape. That would be my my way around um, the things that I would be going through, would be uh, being with those that were closest to me, which were my neighbors, my friends, um, people in the neighborhood, people in my lake, people who I grew up with. And and uh, that that's the only way that I really coped with with the things that I would go through, really with the with the people that I was uh, involved with in my environment. They were family. They were more the family to me because 
I would see them more than I would see my own family. Yeah, especially when you're in a situation with Papa and Abuelita, everybody's working, trying to provide, trying to create that stability, and you have to explore, you have to find your way. And um, that's really a big reason why mom moved us. I remember I, I left the high when I was like five, and I have kind and you just met mom now, you know what I'm saying? And um, having Beautiful, com- beautiful thank woman. Thank you, thank you. God and, bless her. And I remember having conversations with her now and as an adult. I'm like, why'd you pull me out? You know what I'm saying? Because I, I go back home and I enjoy it to a certain degree. For your best interest. And she said it. She said, man, if, if you can only see what we were seeing around. Because we left in 97, which <laughs> is around the time <laughs> you were saying you were born. And um, she was like, it was just out of control. Right, right. I mean, uh, it's not, at, you know, as you as you're a kid, you don't understand it. You know, you really don't. But... It really isn't the best environment. Um, you know, people can say what they want about Hialeah, but I personally believe, you know, I've lost a lot of, I lost a lot of people in Hialeah. Oh, yeah. People that I love dearly, family members, um, friends, uh, relationships, things that, things that you really can't get back. And to be very honest with you, Baba, that I consider it a, a Latin project. Yeah, because we're kind of in the middle of everything. To one right. side, you got Liberty Opa. City, and then you go northwest a little more. You got what was Carroll City, right. or as we remember it, and Laka, et cetera. Right. And, um, you know, you just, um, it's it's really, it kind of everything funnels through there. You know right, everything. No, it's 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 actually, like like I've heard you say before, it's the birthplace of, of El Lukumi in the States. Really? Because... That's really where where it all is. You you know you go a little bit more up north. You, there ain't no botanicas. No. You can't get you can't you can't go to a, a regular store to to get certain plants that you need or you know food or animals that that they would sell in Hialeah. It's just not around. And it, it's crazy because it, I mean all the things and I really think it's divine because I I remember that we used to have this joke with my brother Lazarito Fumbile. He lived in Mango Hill. Right. And. Um, He's like, uh, I have a mano orula tomorrow, and I have nothing ready. And I said, oh. uh, Papi, what are we doing here? He's like, we're in Hialeah, bro. Everything will be ready by tomorrow. Right. We walked around the block. <laughs> we had the whole sign. We hit, I think it was Botanica Holocum over there. We got everything. Right. We were up, and yeah, todo estaba perfecto para el otro día. But I think that's the only place you can make that happen. Right, like that. right. As a matter of fact, you know, I was doing something yesterday, and I needed certain plants, and they grow in my backyard. Como nada. <laughs> so. You know? But I go, you know, I, I go, you just even up here, there's certain, the only plant that I seen literally coming up here was the Latipunla y el Bledo Blanco. But they're everywhere. Right, right. That's, those are the most fundamental plants that grow. They're weeds. They grow everywhere. But, um, yeah, I, like, I haven't seen people to be able to resolver las la cosas que ellos necesitan de un, de un momento al otro. Como si no fuera nada, like like you just said, I'm not prepared. I have nothing ready. I and I go through this constantly. As a matter of fact, I make a few phone calls, and I can guarantee you, if I don't know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that has it, they probably do have it themselves. One degree of separation, like the animalero, everything is it's it's made for that. And I, I ask you, you being from there. What are your earliest memories, even though your spiritual beginnings were somewhere else, and we'll get into that, what were your earliest memories of Ifa as a young kid? Like, did you recognize anything? Did you see anything? There was a time. And it's crazy that you asked me that because since my pa- my family always, you know, they're from Cuba, I, I, I always tried to... Um, I knew that there was something there was something up with me. When I was a kid, you know, I used to tell my father, but he never really used to believe me. Um, I used to see the dead. There was this one time, um, there was this one time uh, I was in my room and I heard a lightning strike in my room. And when I had woke up, I remember seeing, and it looked what I can only describe was an angel, but I could not see their face at all. The only oh. thing I could see was is as if it was someone standing there and a bright light shining behind them. But I knew it was a, it was something that that came to save my life. And as I seen this, um, I went under the covers, 
to pretend I, I didn't see what I just saw. But the light was shining through the covers, so I knew it was still there, and it was something like a type of energy that was sitting there. I knew that it was alive for sure. So I, I uncovered myself, and I looked at it, and it said, say your grandmother's name three times. I went back under the covers. <laughs> I looked at it again, it told me, say your grandmother's name three times. I said, Ninda Morale, Ninda Morale, Ninda Morale. And as the, it, was, it was as if the lightning was being retracted from what I heard. I didn't see that image ever again in my life. A couple, couple um, weeks prior to that, I started seeing this young girl that I used to play with in my backyard. And I, I had my first friends, Marcos, Ricky, they were around the neighborhood. And uh, they would always see me like talking to somebody, talking to uh, this, this person. And they, you know, they would think I was crazy. I didn't know what I was talking about or really, I, I didn't even understand it myself because the person that I saw in front of me was pale. It was, it was, their, their fing her fingertips were blue. She was just pale, but she, she had this indent, indention in her, like in her, in her forehead. And I'm so I, I haven't thought about this in a long time. And, um, and one day I asked her, you know, um, how she got there. And she, she, she never, she never could tell me, you know, where her parents were, where she moved, where she did. And one day, um, you know, you know, being a kid playing around, we're in the lake and we come across this dock that has a carving of the girl's name, which I used to know her as Lucy wow. on the dock. But it wasn't like on the top of the docks, you know, like on Uno de los Postes del Lado, yeah. where the dock is floating from. And it was a concrete dock, too. Wow. And, you know, none of my friends would jump off this dock. So they, they always knew something about the dock, but they never really jumped off of it. And, um, and I asked them why one day, because all my friends were older than me. Always, all my friends have always been older than me. And... Um, and one day they they we we decided to go into the middle of the lake because we used to have sleepovers. It's crazy. We used to have sleepovers in the middle of the lake. Wow. We'd drive a little canoe boat into yeah. the middle of the lake, grab a bunch of blankets, yeah. throw the blankets <laughs> over there, and we'll sleep in the middle of the lake eating fruits, talking about crazy horror stories. Yeah. And in one of those stories, they told me, You don't you don't uh you don't remember that you asked me about Lucy? And I said, Yeah. He goes, Well, you won't believe what happened to Lucy. And at that very moment, I looked up and I see Lucy under the dock of where my friend, like, cause the dock where her name was in, was, was written in, my friend's dock was literally in front of that dock, but on the other side of the lake. Yeah. But on my friend's dock, under his dock, I see her head just sticking out of the water and she goes waving to me. Wow. So I wave back at her. And my friends look, and there's nothing there. They're like, who are you waving? I'm like, I'm waving at Lucy. She actually wants to come over with us. And I look back, and Lucy's not there no more. My friends told me that Lucy, when she was a child, the house that I lived next to, okay, she was a person, and it's crazy because my, my dad confirmed this story. Um, the girl lived in the house next to mines she had escaped out of the house at the middle of the night because some the the mom had left the back door open she came out and she jumped off of that dock and now i know why nobody jumped off the dock because if you look deep into the, like not so deep but not so shallow there's a big boulder pointy sticking right on the bottom of that of that uh, of the lake they told me that she jumped in at like three, four years old, she hit her head on that rock, and they ended up finding Lucy under the dock of my friend. Wow. Right? 
later on, my father um, in life, I, I tell him about that story and he's and and he actually confirmed it and said, yeah, you know what's crazy? Um, we did live next to a lady that her di- her daughter did die in this lake without the details. Yeah, of course. And and then later on in life, you asked me about how that I how how I came into fruition with Ifa. After that period of time, I had I never seen um, no spirits after that. But I always used to see in my grandmother's house because for some reason they came from Cuba. She always used to have these coconuts and these little and these little um, Cuban African dolls that she used to have hanging up, and um, these paintings of Cuba. And I would always ask her. I would always ask her grandma, "What does this mean?" And she never told me. They wouldn't talk about it. Right. It was weird. Now today or recently, a couple a couple months back. I'm sorry, a couple weeks back, I visited my grandmother and my grandmother ended up telling me, que si, eh, ella, she has a form of espiritita. Yeah, sure, yeah. Because she also um, senses and feels. And since Cuba, she's always known about los jaulao, los paleros, los santeros. She's always known about them, but she's never really talked. It's crazy how she told me because she said she never really talked about it because she was scared about how her family was going to picture, uh, uh, paint the picture of her that that she she has this gift because it's what it is, a gift. And what ends up being crazy is when I got initiated into Ifa, she is one of my witnesses. Not that, of course, she wasn't a part of any of the ceremony. No, that she but stood up she, for it, yeah. She was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My father wasn't there. No one was there. But my grandmother, when I was there, she went through the whole process with me there, sitting there. Of course, you know, there's Within things. context, yeah. Right. Right. Ella, ella ayudó a cocinar la cocina. Oh, no. She's. That's why I say to, to this day, she's still one of my witnesses of Ifa. And, and that's when... That's when I really can say that that was the real beginning for me because of the spirituality that that I was seeing before me that literally no one around me could see, only me. And now I know today, now that my grandmother was also someone that seen these things. It's in your blood. It's in your right? DNA. And she also said back in the days in Cuba, I never told. There, there's people that know in the family, but I'm telling you now that you're initiated. You had a great aunt. Que fue tremenda espiritita, and people will come all over the land from Cuba to consultate with her, mm. and she says you look just like her. Wow. Everything you do, how you walk, how you speak, how you talk, how you carry yourself, you are her to the image. That's why I knew that there was something different about you the day that you were born. That's incredible, brother. I mean, with experiences like that, whether it's seeing that ego, right, that presented itself to you, and that's like classic symptom phenomenon, you know, just the symptoms that you're showing. And then um, to see the role that uh, your grandmother played in, in your fulfillment, you know, and mm-hmm. seeing all that your Odu speaks about the female lineage and all of these things, that, that's that's a beautiful tale. Now, you didn't start off in Ifa. No. You started off in Christianity. Well, I was born I baptized recall. Catholic. <clears throat> okay. And, but my family never really was uh, the family to go to church. Um, really proud of my father now from the steps that if you're hearing that, I love you. Um, because my mom left this family in ruins and she left a responsibility. She left a responsibility that wasn't hers on, upon to somebody else. My grandmother and my father were the ones that, that ended up taking the full responsibility, which I don't believe was my grandmother's. And it caused my father, it cost my father the little life that he had left inside of him, the salu, I'm talking because my father's still alive. Um, and his youth because, uh, because of alcohol. And, um, that's more or less where I, where I could tell you that uh, that that's where I really had to actually uh, go out with my neighbors, my friends, the things to, to cope with a lot of the things that I was seeing. But my my father and my grandmother they were 
they're the reason I'm here. They didn't give up on me like my mother gave up on me. They stuck out. They gave they gave me a sense of hope and and really the how to be a man, honestly, because I was the only child and that's how that's how I was the only child. That's how they were they had their hands so full that the spirituality wasn't even a thing. There wasn't any time for it. It, it, it really wasn't. The, the, it was it was coping with the reality that my wife cheated on me. My wife left me with a two month old baby and I don't know how to change a pamper. My wife left me in ruins with a child that that I know nothing of what to do. And I believe that, that what he thought that that's what a mom is, that's why he went to his mom because mom, I, I don't know, what am I supposed to do in this situation? I mean, I, I kind of felt the same thing when I had my, my son, but- It doesn't come with a book. No, it doesn't, it yeah. doesn't. And, and his, way, his way was, you know, just give him what he needs to shut him up. You know, just give him whatever he wants, you know? And honestly, that really wasn't the, the, right, the right way, but the spirituality was never a thing until I started in 2013 on my own. Cause one day throughout my whole life, it's just been, it's really been a mess. But I, uh, I asked for God one day and my father told me, please, uh, you know, we baptize you in cath in Catholicism, and the only people that we know that are religious are people from your mom's side. <laughs> so he told me to um, to follow um, the steps that my cousins, my 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 second cousins, um, which is what my mom's aunts and cousins um, were practicing, and. At that time, we went to the World Mission Society Church of God, and they're but they're they're a Christian church, and what they really believe in is, which was amazing to me, which is father and mother, not just God the Father, but they also preach God the Mother. Um, and I started practicing there for a while. I really did. I started practicing there for a while, for about year and a half, two years. I learned the whole Bible, um, at least most of it, the most important. But there were revelations there that I seen that I still believe to this day is the truth. Um, and it was God the Mother. And the reason why I say that was because once I came into this religion, I understood that God is not only a man, God is also a woman. That's one of the most profound things, I think, as well, that when I came to the realization, without obviously too much detail, but when you understand the concept of Oddu, right, and you realize that I would say God is more of a woman than a man. Right. Because, you know, when you look at all that women do for us, the creation of life, the nurturing, that foundation, that's really profound that they within that that sect of Christianity actually recognize that, and, uh, and that's the first time I've I've personally heard of that, which is really incredible. Right, there's a there's a there's a verse in, for all you Christian brothers out there. Um, there's a verse in the Book of Revelations. Uh, I think it's Revelations 21 that states um, there was an angel that had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues, um, and he and he was uh, ready to. Re to release them. At that, at that point in the Bible, um, all the apostles were killed and the only apostle left was Apostle uh, John. Wow. And he went to the island of Patmos to write the, the, the book of Revelations, which is the last book in the Bible. And at that time, an angel came uh, to John and brought him into a spirit form that was an angel that had one of the seven bowls, one of one of the seven bowls of the seven last plagues, brought him into a spiritual form to a mountain great and high, and showed us the heavenly Jerusalem coming down out of heaven. When we when we interpret this, people think that 
you know, people, this, this is another thing I, I love about Ifab, that no one will really ever understand it because God is never going to speak in a way that human beings can understand. The only way that God is going to speak is in parables. Right. Only his children, only those who are guided by his light will understand the message. Yeah. So when you see the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven, you think that, oh, how can a city be coming down out of heaven? How can Jerusalem be coming down out of heaven? You go a little bit more towards the end. It's the last revelation. Many people think that this, re this revelation is revealed the bride uh, as the church. It says, the spirit and the bride say, come. And let who hear say, come. And let who's thirsty come. And let them take the free gifts of water of life. It said, the spirit and the bride come. Let it said, let it says the spirit and the bride come. We know who the spirit is through the Bible, right? Because the Bible explains that the spirit is Jesus through, uh, you know, Jesus is the Lamb of God. When, when, um, in John, in the book of John, when they seen Jesus coming towards them when he was about to be baptized, John said to everyone, Look, there goes the Lamb of God. So we understood that it, the spirit of God, the Lamb of God, they came before us. So we recognize that the spirit, and Jesus is the Lamb of God. We knew, we knew that, but no one knew who this bride was because in the last revelation, it says the spirit and the bride say, come. And why is this important? Because they are the ones who are giving the water of life, which is eternal life in this, in this last day and age. What happened was the, identify, the, the identification of this bride is what really changed my life and actually has guided me to, where, to this podcast today. This bride, if you if you look in Galatians 4:26, it says the Jerusalem that is above is free, and she is the mother of us all. So if you really look at it just in scripture, right? How can a lamb marry a city? It has it's deeper than that. It, it has right. To be. It, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Right? But if you look at what the water of life is, right? What is the water of life? The book of John also says, when Jesus gave, the, gave them water to drink, right? They said, this water that you drink, you will always thirst. But the water that I give you will well up to be eternal life. So in other words, the only one that could give us eternal life, the, the next life that we're going to live that according to Ifa is real, 100%. The only person that is allowed to give us life after death is Allah Dumare. Right? So, can a church, can a building give me life? Not, not physically, no. Can a, another human being give me, not just life, eternal life. Not just life, eternal life. The life that we're going to live forever in the next life. Only God could give such things. Right. So there was no way that in my mind I understood that this this bride was. And it was crazy because it's the last revelation, because after that, the Bible says anyone who adds to this, God will add to them the plagues described in this book. Anyone who takes away from the word of scripture, this scroll, God will take away from them any share of the tree of life. Heaven. Right. That was the last revelation. And these times. Who is the one that is giving us salvation? Who is the one that is really going to save us all? In this time of darkness, who is the one that is going to guide us to salvation? And when I realized Galatians 4.26, the Jerusalem that is above is free, and she is our mother. And if you go to Revelations 21, she took me to a spirit, to a spirit, in a spirit form, to a mountain great and high, and showed me the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven. If you really look at it, is it free from heaven and coming down from heaven the same thing? She is the mother of us all. There you go. That's what I got. Because if you look at the what is the body of a woman, it is a temple. Right. It is sacred ground. And we talk about the water of life, the reproductive fluids, right. the descent, all of these different things. And it brings me back once again to Odu. Right. And when you look at Ifa is really 
the first spirituality to recognize the divine feminine. And the ironic part about it is because I never made it that far in the Bible going to Catholic school, or maybe I wasn't paying as much attention just because I was such a young man. It seems like Ephah picks up where Revelation ends. Right. And it's ironic that at the end of that scripture, they say anybody that adds to this will, you know, be, 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 cursed. be, be seen with wrath, Plague, you know, plagues, and yeah. ironically, Ifa's philosophy kind of picks up after that, because at that point it kind of leaves you hanging like what's next, what's next. And then we think we're going forward when in reality, that answer was around 8,000 years, even before them. Oh, and then we go to Ika Fung, the, the, where, where the mandamiento Ifa came down, or I like to say the 10 commandments of God, right? Yeah. And one of those commandments, I actually have it tattooed, honor the father and the mother. Right? Me, this is one thing I really appreciate about the life that I lived, even though it wasn't so great. It, was, it helped me understand, really, that this is a spiritual thing. Not everyone has, okay, because what if, I'm, what if my father's a rapist? What if my mother's a murderer? I'm supposed to honor that? That's hard, yeah. Right? What if, what if, what if my father raped me as a child? I'm supposed to honor that? There's a spiritual meaning to it. You're there supposed. has to be a spiritual father and a spiritual mother. What came first, the chicken or the egg? I do not believe the egg came first. The woman had to come first. Through the woman, all uh, every babalawo comes from woman. Oh, yeah, in one way or another, spiritually or physically. Right. The mother is everything of this religion. And you look at the Odu of Baraka, it says that the most important thing or the most valuable thing we have in nature is women. Without it, we have utter and complete population collapse. I tell you, Julio, you're a really amazing case. And I tell you why, because I've met other brothers who have um, experienced other spiritualities, uh, profounded themselves within them as you have with your study and references of verses. And when you look at your Odu, like even the Pataki we were talking about before we started recording, um, where in Obaraobe, it speaks of Moses. It speaks right. of, you know, that process where the child was abandoned, found, you know, these are all biblical things, ultimately. Right. And, then, you know, to actually lead you into this spirituality um, is really incredible. So, I mean, as you get to the point where... As a matter of fact, since we're talking about that, I actually, when, after I did Ifa, I actually got this tattooed, right? And it's a Bible verse. And it actually showed, I'm gonna try, cause I did it in Spanish. I actually took a picture of it so I could read it to you in English so that you can tell me how different really this is brothers and sisters out there. Isaiah 61, one through, and three, one through three. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim freedom for the captive and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of the vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty <laughs> instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of the spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. God has anointed me in this religion. I have free prisoners. I have cured the brokenhearted. I have guided the lost. Because many people ask, what is Ifa? What is Ifa? And Ifa is, how can you make a sad person happy? How can you fill the void of a person that is empty? Yeah, I'll take that, definitely. Ifa is for those that are captive, for those that no one believe in, for those that, that really are brokenhearted, that have, that literally are in their last, uh, their last leg of life. How can Ifa, just alone with Ifa, one person beat 30 enemies? You, you actually make me reminisce upon a pataki that's in your own Odu. Um, there's a, 
a story where the person arrived at the river and they were being followed by enemies, negativity, ayewo. And um, they visited the Babalawo who lived by the river in Obarawo Bay. Wow. And when they performed divination. And you, I do today, by the way. You live by the river? <laughs> oh, well, that's Obarawo Bay in Ire lives by a river. <laughs> and he performed divination right there by the riverbank and the Odu Obarawo Bay was revealed. Wow. Where Ifa said that you have to cross the river. Right. You are coming with absolutely nothing. Your hope is abysmal. <laughs> and you need to begin anew. Right. And the person said, but what will become of me? Right. I'm and afraid. I just, this was my question. This was my questions. And then he said, you have to take a leap of faith. And I believe if the char- I believe the character in the story is the worm. Wow. Ironically. Where the worm had to swim across the river to the other side, and he forgot his past life and continued. Right. Wow. So you mentioned <laughs> the hope and the happiness and all these other things, and these are actually concepts that are even present within your Odu, and you're a living testament to them through your transitions, through your growth. You know, when you now know what Ifa is, what was it like as you were getting closer to your initiation? You know, your process, good and bad. I was terrified. I mean, man. Because the day that I was actually. How old were you? How old were you? 19. Yeah, I was 22 when I jumped, man. And at the end of the day, when you're surrounded by all these people, it's wild. No, and in reality, I personally believe that it got to be that way. Yeah. It has to be that way because. Even this is a secret. Yeah. The process of how to do just to get a it secret. there. And people van y cogen un ide de una tienda, se lo ponen, soy tremendo all out. And it's a process. A little more than that. It's a secret and it's it's not one day either. And it's it's this is I like to say this. Así simple como lo ve, tan complicado que es. <laughs> Así tan tan sencillo como lo ve. Tan complicado, okay? Yeah. So, and it's a secret. Yeah. You cannot reveal this to anybody, right? So, I, 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 I literally, when I first came to this, I was terrified. As a matter of fact, um, I got I got persecuted out of the church. They literally called. They they literally told me, uh, I'm the son of Satan. So they excommunicated you. Right, because what happened was, um. They uh, they wanted me to preach because you can see, yeah, uh, yeah, about <laughs> open, yeah. They wanted me to preach, and um, I had a lot of tattoos. I had to cover up a lot. Um, I, I I had a bunch of crazy girlfriends. I was I was living a, a, with everything that I, with no guidance, no 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 ifi interaction, no spiritual no spirituality. This was my first time jumping, and I was doing it all wrong. All I knew was how to, my memory is phenomenal, so I knew how to memorize the, the scripture, but they didn't see that. What they saw in front of them was, I guess, to their words, the son of Satan. And man, did that, you have no idea, you have no idea, that that devastated me because I literally called for God one day in my life, and that's where they brought me to, right? That's where God brought me to, and, and really, actually, I believe, um, saved me at that time, but then, I sat there and I thought, I'm like, me being exiled like this out of the church, how how is this salvation? Man, I cried. I still cry because of the embarrassment that they made me um, pa- um, pasar adelante de mi familia because my family was the one that brought me there. And in reality, mi propia familia me metió el cuchillo en la espalda because they the, they the ones that was telling the pastor, the envidia, because once again, I knew more scripture than them. Que yo fui tanto, tanto, tanto afuera. And reality, all the apostles, they were murderers. They were tax evaders. They, none of them. Nobody arrived with clean fingernails. None of them. They killed Christians, even some of them. Yep. Right? Apostle Paul. They and, killed Christians, even and some And that's of them. the old saying of the old Baalaos. They used to say, no hay Baalao que llega y fa con las uñas limpias. No, no es imposible. Would, because es imposible. If, if, if it's not that your initiation isn't legitimate. I'm not saying that anybody has to do anything illegal to get into Ifa, but what I am saying is that you have to have had experiences. Right. Because without those, how can you teach? Because that's what the old dudes of Ifa are. It's, it's, or is, it's Orula writing down what he went through right. so that we can learn from it, have that faith building moment, and grow from it. I mean, you having gone through similar experiences in Christianity or Ifa, 
what, what would you like to say to those people that are looking for what to avoid, you know, so they don't go through those, uh, those, those pitfalls? I was terrified because the first thing that happened to me was after they called me the devil's child, they said that I needed to study outside of the church, meaning I needed to do sermons and, and, and biblical studies outside of the church. I wasn't even allowed inside the church. And that I had to do that for God knows how long until I was able to get back into the church. Crazily was, um, I seen a ball out that ended up bringing me to this religion. God bless him. I love you very much. Thank you for everything you've done for me. And um, unfortunately, we fell off because of of destiny. And sometimes, you know, we're not meant to, you know, be together because of we we might be just on two different times. I just let's say it like that. And the first thing that they did for me was right when I started en medio un jaboncito, yo me bañé, and I was like, wow, what is this? I feel rejuvenated. I feel brand new. I feel like I was reborn. I wanted to get involved with this. And the first thing that happened was they called me. My brothers and sisters called me. Oh, don't do this. Oh, my God, you're going to go to hell. I'm like, I just thought that you guys told me you guys didn't want me nowhere near the church. Yeah. Now y'all the first ones calling me, telling me, don't do this. When the jabón's working. Right. Cuando, <laughs> al momento que me entró el jaboncito rico, así yo diciendo, pero qué es esto. Okay. So yo cogí el teléfono. And I'm like, okay, está bien. Uh, what do I do? What do I do? And the recommendation that I give to everyone, okay, during this transition, do not allow anyone, please, to, de to deteriorate or to defer you from your faith. The Achei. person that tells you, hey, stop what you're doing, Believe in what I believe in. This is the only way. This is the right way. Get your money back. That's the false prophet. Wow. El babalawo. No, this is not. I call those people terrorists because this is not forced upon anybody. Otura Irete says it. You can't yeah. proletize. You have to allow people to feel the call the same way we did. Right. This is not this is not forced upon anybody. On the contrary, I know people gave yanning, say I say boat, and then they go to the church right after. Yeah, all the time. Right? This is this is a way of life. Spiritualism, spirituality. This has nothing to do with sexual preference. This has nothing to do how you dye your hair. Well, some in some places it might be taboo. Mm -hmm. Right? But um, this has nothing to do about your skin color, about what you believe in. It's about beyond that. It's way beyond that. It's way beyond that. It's destiny. It's portals. It's, 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 this is the only way I can explain it. It's destiny within your own spirituality. And if anyone is forcing you to do something, even especially, um, oh, hey, you need to stop doing what you're doing and tiene que hacerte la mano rula right now, this way, how I'm telling you because of this, because si no te va a morir, there are, remember, there are some cases that for some people, you know, they are a biku, they might come to, to leave uh, um, prematurely, maybe they have lived their life previously before wonderfully and they, they died five years before their time so they have to reincarnate to live the next five years of their life as a child well taken care of and then move on yeah, there, are a, there are cases like crazy this crazy concept yeah right but there but there isn't there is no such thing as forcing someone no, no. and if you do have this pressure hey um you're gonna go to hell hey you're you're you're, you're worshiping the devil hey um be careful that 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 once you do this, you taint your soul. I, I tell you that this is not true. This is not true. And on the contrary, me seeing both sides of the story, I can tell you that this is the closest thing to God that I've ever seen. It's just, I think, the thing about God is, is God is, when we look at the Yoruba concept of Emi and how, right. she, you know, she lives within all of us, that sacred breath where Odi occupies its space, God is within us. It's not that we are God, but there is God within us to where we can basically recreate it here if we do things the right way. Yes, sir. Exactly. So it really, you know, I have this conversation with my wife 
from time to time, heaven, hell, limbo, whatever you want to call it, it's all right here. Right. You know, it's it, the old Yoruba elders, they say, don't wait for heaven. Right. Just create it right here. Enjoy it now. Right. Because as soon as we go out and we come back in, we're coming right back here if we have to try again. So. Right, right. And that's the same That's the same concept of that, you know, why a lot of people ask why um, animal sacrifice. Before, before, we get, before we get too deep into that, I just want to let it be known. What's the Passover? Oh, yeah. You go back. You go into the Old right. Testament. It was all there. Right, right. The Old Testament, how they sacrificed the lamb to the doorframe to avoid the plague of the oh, first. Oh, yeah. Kumeji right. speaks of all of that. All right. those old Jewish ceremonies to right. be able to right. avert death. Right, right, you know? right. Look, even to the scripture that I just read. They're all connected to Ifa. Yeah. They're all connected to Ifa. And the truth the truth is that if you, if you really sit there and you think about... I'm sorry about that. If you really sit there and you think about who or Lord Dumare was, who or Lord Dumare is, right? The concept, the concept that we sacrifice an animal or something like all religion, oh, because they sacrifice animals, they're devil worshippers. All religions have blood. Well, you look, it's crazy you even say that because I was just and every now and again Instagram puts out a good reel. It was this uh this Muslim brother and he was uh making reference to like uh, the word Allah and stuff like right. that. The crazy thing is, is in old Aramaic, the word for God was Elah. Or Elohim. Which composes Orumila's name. Right, right. Or Lodumari's name right, as well. Right, right. So it really goes back all to that one root and to see somebody like you who can provide those confirmations and has walked the paths to get to a place where you're comfortable with who you are and what you're doing right now is, is really amazing, brother. I have to ask you, um, after such a conversation, my... my my crowning question for you is: Is what has Ifa given you at this <laughs> at this point? <laughs> wow, Joseph Baba, thank you for having me. No, First of off, course. all right. No, of course. Um, thank you for giving me the time and the space. I could tell you this: There's nothing that Ifa hasn't given me, good or bad, and. And in the end, whether it was good or bad, it was all for the good. Ifa has given me the greatest power and gift on the face of the earth. When I understood the concept that, like we were just saying, heaven or hell, right? These are just words that one puts in their head so that we can somewhat imagine what that is. Because I don't think there's a heaven. I believe there's a spiritual world. And I don't think there is a hell. I think the hell is your conscience. Mm -hmm. The things that you do in this life. Bueno, tu asesinaste mil gente, right? And you took fingernails and teeth one by one, every day, to the day you died. This is what you will experience when you die. You have to live with that. For the rest of your life. Some people ask why animals are sacrificed, right? Some of these animals are spirits of whatever depths they may have done in their past life that must be sacrificed to Orisha. Obetwa. And sometimes, guess what? They might have to do it over and over again. To be able to reach a certain point in the ladder where they deserve to come back as human beings. Exactly. And sometimes, you know, I, thanks to Chief Papola. Um, yeah, Boy, boy, yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, he, he helped me understand, you know, life after death. He helped me understand um, that the Egyptians had a great concept of this too. Oh, sure. Right? You know, uh, putting all the murals on the wall so that they could have guidance on the way out. Um, of all the things that they've done or, or what they needed to remember so they didn't forget when they when they got to their resting place, final judgment. And um, I sat there and I understood that everything that Ifa has given me to this point has been through Ifa, whether it's been my kids, whether it's been my home. My brother, I ha when I first got with my with my with my with my fiance, we were together in middle school, in third grade, or fifth, th fifth grade, third fifth grade, we, we first got together. 
she was in Corona at that time and I wasn't. Wow. And entre chisme de los chamacos y esta cosa, I, I, I'm going to say it live, baby. I was scared to get my heart broken from me. <laughs> so, so, you know, we ended up separating and um, we lived our lives as, in, as, as growing up. Hey, you know, she had her phone, I had my phone, we did our thing. And I ended up, I mean, I'm talking about the apartments I've lived in, brother. You have no idea the roach infestations, cha -cha. The, the one rooms, the sleeping in my, man, I've slept, you, there is no shame. I've slept in my grandmother's bed till I was 22 years old sometimes word. because I didn't have nowhere else to sleep. Word, word, word. Me and my grandmother was in an efficiency in Carroll City, had nothing to do but sleep in her bed. Yeah, I remember the apartments over there on, what was it, 42nd or 47th? Oh, there, yeah. Half. Yeah, it was, it was rough. It was no, rough. It, and it still, it still is. But what's crazy is my wife, right, when me and her reunited three years ago back together, I met her on the lake that I am currently living and renting my house at right now that's destiny so so in other words so so they could understand my wife and me were, were separated for a very long time because she had she had santo done and i didn't eventually when i when i had um eventually when i when i got crowned ifa then god allowed us to come back together Beautiful. when we came back together right we came back together in a place where today I come outside of my house and I look at this lake. I come outside and I look at this lake and I'm thankful to Obatala every day because through this same lake is the lake that me and my wife have reunited after so long. She's giving me kids. She's giving me a home. I actually found right before I met her, I'm like, God, please, I need a good woman. I need a woman that's gonna be like this. My wife is tiny, but she's mighty. Yeah, my wife gets down. <laughs> yes, she does, and I love her for it because if she didn't, and sometimes you know, be careful what you ask for because you're gonna get it. I asked for this. I asked for a woman with discipline, a woman that's gonna be correcta, que no es que no es una por ahí, que es verdad alguien que me va a cambiar mi vida, my destiny, my life. That's gonna be the woman of my dreams. And Ifa gave me my best friend. She brought me two beautiful angels. The things I've done in my past, brother. Some things are sometimes not even best to be even said here. But the change is it's, it's not fathomable about, about the things that Ifa has given me and my kid. There is no word that can explain it. It's a feeling. Like I said, it was a void in my heart that was empty. I had nothing but the want to die. The want... To, I was being persecuted by those that, that, that were considered to be God's children. I wanted nothing more but to just go. And he fulfilled this and filled, overfilled it. Over, over, honestly, me pasó la mano más de lo que yo pensé. He gave me more than what I've ever asked for. Gave me, gave me the, even the chance to be here today to, to let people know that you guys are not by yourself. I'm here with you guys. I've had this void in my heart. I've had not, nothing left to live for. There was nothing more to do than to literally just grab a gun and face my enemies. There was nothing left to do than to spend the rest of my life in prison. There was nothing more. I had nothing left, no want, no nothing. No family, no kids. I'm the only child. What am I, what's my purpose? What's my meaning? Who am I here? What, what, what was I brought to this world to do? To suffer like this? To go through this? To be left with nothing, to like that, Ifa has given me the purpose and the meaning. No, son. They said, you are the devil's child. I say you're the son of God. They say, you will be nothing. I say you're a wolf. They say that you will never prosper, that you will be poor for the rest of your life. That you will never, ever, ever have kids. These are things that was told to me. Because if you do, they'll be bastard kids. Because if you have kids, they'll be bastard kids. You'll die before your kids even reach three years old. You'll die before you reach 21 years old. Right? These were the things that were said to me. And I sat there. And when Ifa brought my wife, when Ifa brought my kids, Ifa brought me home. 
Ifa brought me the power, like I said, the title of an Awo, where I can go to Africa right now and they will say, Aboru Aboje. This is the biggest blessing that I can, and I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. I was scared to do this because of all, let, let, don't let them do it to you guys. Please don't let them, do not let them influence you out of saving your life. Because this will save your life and save all those that are around your, all, all those who are around you lives as well. I, I am nothing but grateful to Allah Dumare, to Ifai, to Eshun, because I have everything, Baba, everything, thanks to them, everything, everything. Uli, what a beautiful story. We sincerely appreciate you coming, and um, I hope that your testimonial today will provide the same hope and inspiration that Orumila has provided you. You are a testament to where we're from. You are a beacon for our people, and I think the only thing that's going to come from you and the people who are going to have the pleasure to be able to interact with you on any level is positivity, and it's been an absolute pleasure. God bless you, brother. Abaru boy. Appreciate you. So before we get out of here... We got some member shout outs. Oh my God, we can't forget those. Oh, the elevator music. <laughs> Julio, I'm so sorry you had to be here, be here for the elevator music. Yeah. <laughs> I know, we had such a deep conversation, and here we go. I know. He'll go ahead with the shout outs, definitely. All right, let's well, Shout out to Julio, right? He's Absolutely. in the membership program he, yes, to begin his, with. His name is up there. He's a VIP member. We nice. got Alyssa Statler. We got Julio Morales. We got awesome. Jabri Bembry. Oh, and, Jabri. Uh, yep. We have uh, another VIPs. We got Particles of Light nice. and Lulu Sprandell. And we got some new members here. His names got, are great. I know. We got Julie Q, Joya Brandon, Sage, and Makaiva Williams. So don't forget, guys, join our membership program for a ton of extra content. Awesome, guys. We love you. Hit that subscribe button. Until next time, see the light. What a boy. Hold on. I got to get the music. Hang on. Hang on. on. Bring that elevator. <laughs> run it back. Run it back. <laughs> Do the horns. You got the horns? <laughs> no, oh, no, right. the drums. Yeah. All right, guys. <laughs> see ya.